Pra. What's up everyone, my name is Spicy and today I have two stories coming out of the subreddit Pro Revenge. We are close to 2500 subscribers and to thank you for this amazing journey, I am giving away 4 Amazon gift cards once we reach the 2500 subscribers mark. I have not yet decided if it will be $25 gift cards or $50 gift cards, but to participate in the giveaway, you need to subscribe to the channel and like this video. And if you're having fun here, just leave a fire emoji in the comments. Congratulations rose for the comment of the day. Bra Refuse to provide accurate investment percentages and take me off the reporting team? Enjoy being fired and losing equity in the business. I work for a very large financial company. Like the tech industry, occasionally we will want to pursue market opportunities in areas we are not necessarily experts in. And it is much easier and faster to buy, either whole or controlling interest, in a specialized investment company or advisor in order to acquire their talent, resources and industry connections commonly called an acquire hire. Several years ago, we acquired a controlling interest in one such company. As an incentive to keep the talent on board and minimize disruption to their business, instead of buying them outright, we bought about two-thirds of the interest and the management bought the remainder. They then hung shares of that remainder over the heads of certain key managers as future bonuses to be triggered by performance and remaining with the company for a specific amount of time beyond the acquisition. The CIO of the company was one such employee. We shall call him A-Hole CIO. This guy was a piece of work. He prided himself in having attended some university, I forgot which, and felt that anyone without a certain title or higher was beneath him. He was used to being a big fish at his company, but did not quite get that guys like him and his new corporate parent were a dime a dozen. I work on the acquisition of his company and interacted with him fairly regularly. And while he was super nice with my boss, he never wasted an opportunity to be condescending to me, even though I was doing the bulk of the work. His favorite move was to refuse to answer my calls or emails and instead instruct his secretary to reply on his behalf after I had reached out to him multiple times about the same thing. Luckily, his secretary was awesome, and in my honest opinion, probably good enough to have done his job. Anyhow, as a result of the acquisition, the company now had to report a host of different activities to the parent company on a fairly regular basis. One of these things was the percentage ownership of certain investments in a wide range of funds by a host of different entities. The thing to know is that as you invested in these funds, your equity acquired an equity stake that varied somewhat from reporting period to reporting period based on the performance of the fund and how much you were invested in it at the time. Unless the size of your investment changed substantially, the percentage variation in the ownership stake varied very little from one period to another. Still, those fluctuations had to be reported regardless of size. I tracked these for a host of similar companies owned by the parent company and had developed a reporting system that all of them used, which ensured detailed and accurate reporting. Everyone that is, except for this company, which at the express direction of their CIO a-hole refused. Now I tried talking sense to the CIO, his analyst and to his secretary, and in every case he shut me down. Instead of supplying the information in the manner requested, he sent me an automatic performance summary generated by different software and told me to figure out the numbers myself because his staff did not have the time to change their methods and accommodate me. Of course, I went to my bosses with this, and they advised that since this was a new company and we really wanted to build good relations with them while we were integrating them into our business, to just play along and try and play nice with this guy. In other words, make the best of it. Enter malicious compliance. I did exactly what they ordered me to do. Every single reporting period, for a year, I took their crappy report, fleshed out their numbers as best as possible and reported them, fully knowing that they were inaccurate. Every single time I interacted with their staff, I made sure to tell them this and to ask them to please use the system every other investment subsidiary was using. Every single time, they came back with orders from the CIO to refuse. Around that time, the CIO decided to grace us with his presence and flies in to do a meet and greet with our team. My boss and I even had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with him. CIO comes into the room greets my boss and then proceeds to ignore that I am standing in front of him with my hand out waiting to shake his. 
even look me in the eye while proceeding to ignore me in front of my boss. I waved off his behavior and time passed. About 6 months later, the parent company decides to audit their business. And what do you think they find? Yup, they find that all the equity and performance reports are off. Sometimes way off. Of course, the president of the sub gets a call from my boss's boss, the parent company CIO and gets an earful. They, in turn, pull in the CIO and give him an earful about their reports. He immediately proceeds to throw me under the bus. The next day, I get called into my boss's office for a conference call with the president of the subsidiary, the CIO and the corporate CIO. Right off the bat, the a-hole CIO starts demeaning me and demanding to know how I could possibly have messed up their reporting. The guy lays into me and demands that I be fired for the messed up. By now, I am tired of this guy's BS and I am done playing nice with him. So I ask to be excused, get my laptop and return. I then proceeded to forward and quote email after email, evidencing my request for compliance and his express refusal to do so. For a year and a half, the corporate CIO thanked me and asked me to step out of the meeting. A couple of days later, my boss pulls me aside to tell me that going forward, the subsidiary will be reporting all figures as per my instructions, and the a-hole CIO got chilled up by his and my bosses. However, while he agreed to comply going forward, he demanded that I no longer be part of the reporting process. My boss told me to not worry about it, that it was one less thing for me to worry about and the a-hole CIO was just being vindictive because I had embarrassed him in front of his bosses. Fair enough, I passed the process on to someone else and enjoyed the reduced stress. I still had to interact with the company's analysts on direct investments, but I no longer had to interact with the a-hole CIO, which was fine by me. Fast forward 2 months and I find out that a-hole CIO has been fired and that it was his handling of my report that caused the corporate CIO to order a review of this guy's investments and reporting at every level. They found discrepancies everywhere, sometimes serious ones. It seems he had been fudging numbers in order to report better performance than he was actually generating because he was not one of the initial equity holders but was one of those managers who had been offered equity stakes in the company based on performance and longevity. His refusal to play ball with my little report ended up shining a light on his activities which ultimately cost him his job in a very lucrative equity stake in the business which was probably worth 7 figures. Well, you refused to comply to a simple reporting method because you were too entitled to comply and go along with the way that the company who bought you told you to use. But now, we also understand why. You were hiding something. You were being shady. You boosted numbers and fake doing better than what you are actually doing. One thing you learn fast in business is that honesty is the best insurance policy you can have. He probably could still have his job if he will not have lied about performance and actually tried to make the business more profitable. But no, you took the easy path and faked your numbers. Well, guess who lost this huge bonus? It is you. You messed up man, out of that out of entitlement and laziness. Sucks to be you, but not really cause I have no pity for cheaters. Quick reminder, I will be hosting a giveaway for gift cards pretty soon so make sure to subscribe to the channel and stay tuned with the giveaway. Also just do it if you're interested in getting more videos like these. I enjoy making these videos and I hope you like watching them. Won't move your car? I hope you like rotten meat in your vents. Let me set the scene. The year is 2017 and my family and I live in a quiet suburban street. It is mostly retired couples and some families with very young kids. Normal. Now earlier this year, the house diagonal from us decided to move and sold it. About the day after everything is packed away, 5 cars come peeling down the street and pull into the driveway and out in the road. They are a bunch of college age kids so we give them some slack and let them go for a day or two. Meanwhile, day in and day out different cars keep peeling down the street. Some are over 30 miles over the speed limit. This does not go over well with the neighbors. 
for most of the younger kids walk and ride their bikes down our street. Everyone is concerned they might hurt someone or someone's dog. Before something serious happens, some of the neighbors who have lived here 20 plus years go over and meet the newbies. This includes my mom. They are polite at first. They agree to not go over 35. But more cars keep racing down the road. Along with that, they seem to be having parties every other Tuesday with about 30 cars up the street. Now the nice teas are over and the cops are called. Usually they will not do this, but about 5 calls came in from a bunch of houses and the police department was fed up. Having nothing better to do, they send one of the deputies and they wait around the corner for a few hours a day. About 2 fines are given and then they slow down. Except they get smart. There's only one place the deputy can hide. So they send one car to see if they are there. If not, they speed again. The deputy gives up after about 3 days and is gone. A few months pass and we were at a loss of what to do. Summer is almost here so my brother and I are outside more. We have a basketball hoop at the edge of the road right across from the house. Our driveway is at almost a 45 degree angle and all my brother's buddies come and play, so we leave it there. There's a problem, the cars keep parking to block the hoop. My brother is pissed since that's all he used to do in the summer. He goes over to the house and guys just shut the door on him. Now my mom is pissed. She marches over there and asks them to move their cars, sweetly, and when they refuse, she hatches a plan. This summer was a hot one and my mom decides to cook some homemade pea soup. Now she burns this batch by accident of course. Now instead of chucking it out, she puts it in this big plastic jar, seals the lid and places it out on the back porch in the middle of the sun. Weeks pass and she occasionally opens it. There are maggots squirming around and it turns a deep brown green. There is also this clear yellow liquid that separated itself to the top, disgusting. Meanwhile, my brother is determined to play basketball when there's a little opening. About 20 minutes in, the ball bounces onto one of the cars by accident. There was no mark. But the car alarm goes off so he's trying to leave. I run out to see one of the regulars who live there, a woman, yelling obscenities at my brother and how he needs to pay for her car. My mother runs out after me and starts yelling at the lady to get away from my brother. There was no damage and it was clear but the lady kept screaming. My brother and I run inside and watch as the woman follows my mom up the driveway waving her arms and still yelling. My mom yells for her to get off her property or she will call the cops. By now, our older neighbors are watching, some walking over, and the lady realizes that she better leave it or she might actually get in trouble. She runs across the street and slams the door. Around 2 in the morning on a Tuesday, with one of their parties, my mom puts on a gas mask. My dad worked in pest control so he had one and takes out the soup. The smell was terrible. It was rotting meat and something undescribable. She takes the jar and goes over to the cars as quiet as possible. Onto almost every car, she dumps the rotten pea soup onto the windshield and into that space where there are the windshield wipers. Before anything, I have to explain these were nice cars. Not sports, but Priuses and new cars, which does not fit with their age. The next morning, my mom's is out sitting in the garage, smoking a cigarette like always. It is around 6 in the morning and the lady that yelled at my brother comes out first. She is obviously tired and gets into her car. A minute or two passes as this woman has the most disgusted face. She turns on the windshield wipers and had a hunk of rotting ham is sent flying. My mom is now in tears and I mean tears. I wake up and head downstairs to the garage to see the woman yelling and about 20-ish kids heading out to their cars. Each one's is trashed. The cops are called, but since there is no evidence, they can press charges against my mom. One by one, they leave in their ruined cars. They moved out three weeks later. So you were being a young jerk and a jerk mom? You got served. That was a really disgusting revenge to be honest. I don't even have the balls myself to do that. I know someone who was so pissed at someone that he pissed in a bucket for weeks and he threw it inside an open window of the guy who he was pissed against. Anyway, that's disgusting. But did you ever do a really disgusting revenge against someone? Or maybe you know someone who did? Let me know in the comments. I would be interested in knowing that. I don't know why, but I would. Before I let you go away from the heat you just received, I want to thank you for watching my videos. 
Thank you for liking the video, for commenting, for subscribing, and even for those who share the videos. This really helped me a lot and I appreciate what you do for me. All of our efforts will ultimately allow me to make better videos for you. I have a ton of ideas, but without support, I can get to this point. I wish you all a beautiful day and I hope you're doing your best to reach your dreams. Live a fulfilled life, have fun, and love the people around you.